Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through how to look at the Lord of Indices but with algebra. So, looking at how we incorporate letters into this, some numbers into this, and then some brackets into this. If you want thousands more questions to practice, then they're all available for you on my website. going to have a look at the laws of indices using algebra. If you haven't already watched the laws of indices video with just numbers and then you'll understand what we're going through in this video. Now the first laws of indices is that if you have a base number to a power and you multiply it the same base number to another power then that is the same as having that base number to the powers added together. So basically if you're multiplying you can add the powers as long as the same number on both sides. So using that for question one we've got the base number d on both sides. So we're going to write down d because in the answer you have the same base number and then we've got the two powers. So we've got a power eight and we've got a power six. Now we're multiplying so we're going to add the powers. So eight plus six is 14. The answer is d to the power of 14. So the main difference between doing this with algebra and doing this with numbers is that we have a letter in our answer, the d, whereas previously with just with numbers we have a number there with a power. So do the same thing with question two. Firstly identify the base, so that is the f. It has to be the same on both sides, otherwise these rules don't work. And then we're going to look at the powers. Now we've got a power 6 and in the second one there isn't a power. Now if you find that there isn't a power it's just going to be to the power of 1. We don't bother writing power 1. We just write nothing there. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So it's going to be f to the power of 7. Looking at question 3 we've now got some extra numbers involved and this is where we have our biggest change from laws of indices with just numbers. Now we want to identify our base first and the base is going to be the q. We've got a Q on both sides. So let's write down Q in our answer. Now you can also see that we've got some uh, indices here. We've got a six and we've got a five and we're multiplying. So we're gonna add those together. So six plus five is 11. However, we've now got these numbers at the start and we haven't done anything with these numbers yet. What we do with these numbers is just gonna follow our normal rules. We've got a five, we've got a multiply sign and we've got a four. So five times four is 20. So we pop that at the start. So our answer is 20 Q to the power of 11. So basically we're gonna do this in three separate sections. We're gonna identify the base number. We're going to identify a multiplication using normal rules with the normal size numbers. And then with the small numbers, we're gonna be using rules of indices. So let's use those three steps with question four. Firstly, let's look at our normal numbers. We've got a six, a multiply time, and a seven. So six times seven is 42. Then we're gonna identify our base. Now we've got an S, both sides. So the base will be an S. And then we've got our indices. We've got an eight and we've got an 11. And because we're multiplying, we're gonna add those together using our rule. So that is gonna be 19. So the final answer is 42 S to the power of 19. Now let's look a look at the final question. Let's look at our normal size numbers first. We've got a five, a multiply sign, and a five. Five times five is 25. Second step, identify the base. We've got a Q on both sides. That's not gonna change. Let's write in the Q. And then we'll look at the indices. So we've got a four, we've got a 14. And we know that we're multiplying, we add the powers. So four plus 14 is 18. So it's 25 Q to the power of 18. In three steps, look at the color coding, look at the pink step, deal with the normal numbers first, then the blue step, identify the base letter and put that in. It's not going to change. And then third step, look at the powers and use whatever rule we're using. Moving on to the medium questions, you can see that these are divide questions. And again, there is a rule of indices for these. And it is that you have a base number with a power and you're dividing it by the same base number, which is to a power then that's the same as taking away the powers. So looking at question one, we've got the base, which is the R on both sides. Let's write in the R. Then we've got the powers and we've got power six and power four. 
Now this divide question, it's using our laws of indices, we're going to be taking the powers away. So six take away four is two. So the answer is r to the power of two. Moving on to question two, same method, identify the base. So we have a g on both sides. Let's write in the base g. Then we have powers. We've got power four and a power seven. So we're going to do four take away seven. That's a small number, take away a large number. So I have a negative number answer. So that's going to give us negative three. And you can have negative number powers. That's absolutely fine. So our answer is g to the power of negative three. Now, like the easy questions, we've got extra numbers involved and it works exactly the same way. So first thing to do is deal with the normal numbers using normal number rules. So we have an 18, we have a divide, and we have a 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. Normal numbers, use normal rules, let's divide. Then we're going to identify our base number. Now we've got an R on both sides, so let's put the R in. And then finally, we'll look at the powers. We've got a 14. We've got a four, and if we're dividing the normal size numbers and these small numbers, the indices, they're going to be taken away. Again, look at the rules of indices to figure out which ones are which. Uh, 14 take away four is 10. So the answer is 3R to the power of 10. Same method for question four. So we have a 28 divided by seven. And I'm just looking at the normal size numbers. I'm ignoring the letters. I'm ignoring the powers. 28 divided by seven is four. Then let's look at the base number. We've got an E on both sides. So just look at the letters for now. Let's put that E in. Then we'll look at the small numbers. We'll look at the powers. We've got a three, we've got a divide, and we've got a nine. So if we're dividing, we're gonna take the powers away. So three, take away nine. Small number, take away a large number, be a negative number. It's gonna be negative six. So the answer is four E to the power of negative six. Let's do the same thing for question five. So normal numbers first, we've got an 18, a divide sign, and a two. So 18 divided by two is nine. Then we'll look at the letters. We've got an I on both sides. Let's write an I in the answer. Then let's look at the powers. We've got a power 12, a power 11. And since we're dividing, we're gonna take away the powers. So 12 take away 11 is one. Now, one little detail, we don't normally write power ones. So if you get a one in your answer, you don't need to write it down. We assume that anything that doesn't have a power on, it's going to be power one. So we can write nine I as our final answer. Moving on to the hard questions. Now, again, we've got another rule of indices. And this one, you can see we've got brackets involved. So if we have a base number and it's to a power, and that's in brackets, and it's to a second power, that is the same as multiplying those powers together. So looking at question one, we've got our base number, which is the Z. So let's write Z down. Then let's look at the powers. So we've got power four and power two. So if you've got powers on either side of the bracket, we've got two sets of powers, then we're gonna multiply them together. So four times two is eight. The answer is Z to the power of eight. We can do the same thing with question two. So our base number is going to be the B. So let's write B down. Then let's look at the powers. We've got a three and a three. So three times three is nine. The answer is B, the power of nine. A common mistake, he'll be adding those powers together. But remember your rules of indices. You add your powers if it's a multiplication. This is a bracket. We've got two sets of powers around a bracket. It's going to be multiplication. Now, again, with these questions, we've now got some extra numbers involved. Now, we'll talk about those numbers last. Let's just look at what we know so far. So we know how to deal with the base. The base is a C. So let's write C down. We know how to deal with the powers. We've got a 2 and a 2. So we're going to multiply those together. 2 times 2 is 4. So the answer is definitely going to have a C to the power of 4 in it. But what do we do with the 3 at the start? With this three, remember the previous questions, normal numbers, you follow normal rules. And this three is in a bracket with a power two on the outside of the bracket. So we're gonna do three to the power of two, which means two threes multiply together, three squared, three times three is nine. So the answer is nine C to the power of four. Any extra numbers inside those brackets will be raised to the power that is outside the brackets. So let's look at question four. 
we have a normal size three and outside the brackets we've also got a three so we're going to do three to the power of three that means three times three times three so three times three is nine nine times three is 27 so we've just done three to the power of three now let's look at the base we've got a q so let's write q down then let's look at the powers we've got power three and another power of three. So a power three in a bracket, we're going to multiply them. Three times three is nine. And you'll notice we used that three twice. We used it in the power calculation, and we also used it to make the, uh, the whole number to be the power of three as well. Let's do the same thing for question five. So we've got a normal number five. Outside the bracket is a three. So we're doing five to the power of three. So three fives multiply together. 5 times 5 is 25, and times that by another 5, 25 times 5 is 125. And it's very important here, the answer is not 25, it's not 5 to the power of 2. The power the 5 is raised to is a power on the outside. It is not the power on the inside of the bracket. Let's have a look at the letters now. We've got a J, so we'll have a J in the answer. And then let's look at the powers. Now, we've already used the power three, but we'll be using it again. We've got a power two and a power three. So two times three is six. So it's 125J to the power of six.